Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Anna Trujillo? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the crime and offer my analysis. Anna Lilia Trujillo was born in Mexico in 1969. Her mother and father actually lived in Arizona by this point, but Anna's mother traveled to Mexico to give birth because she did not want to have her child be drafted in the military during the Vietnam War. She, of course, didn't know her child was a girl and therefore would not have been drafted anyway. Eventually, Anna's family moved from Arizona to Waco, Texas. Anna was described as enthusiastic, outgoing, friendly, and loud. In high school, she was voted best dressed and most popular. Anna married at the age of 19, right after graduating from high school. The couple would go on to have two daughters. Anna worked as a sales representative for a Coca-Cola distributor. Her husband didn't really work steadily. Anna is the one who supported them. The couple separated in 2000 and would later get divorced. Anna was granted custody of her two daughters. In 2001, Anna married again. The family moved to Houston, Texas in 2006. Anna made a living as a massage therapist. The marriage only lasted until 2008. At this point, Anna decided to live alone in Houston. Her daughters lived with another relative. Before Anna's second marriage failed, her behavior changed dramatically. Her emphasis was now on having fun. She regularly went to bars and clubs. She would stay out late at night. Her drinking increased substantially. Anna was arrested for DUI after driving the wrong way on a highway. Anna liked receiving attention from men and had sex with a number of different partners. She allowed her massage therapy license to expire in February 2009, but continued practicing. In 2010, she spent 20 days in jail for violating probation. She had been using marijuana. Eventually, Anna did not have a permanent residence. She lived with various romantic partners. She moved from place to place. Eventually, Anna found herself living with a man in an upscale 35-story condominium building called the Park Lane. In August 2012, in the lobby of the Park Lane, she met a man named Alf Stefan Anderson, who went by his middle name, Stefan, perhaps to avoid being confused with the alien Alf from the sitcom, which ran from 1986 to 1990. Stefan was born in Sweden in 1954. He moved to the United States in 1986. He was a biochemistry professor at the University of Houston. After Anna and Stefan met, he invited her out for drinks. She agreed, even though she was living with another man in the same building. They went out that same night, and within a few days, Anna was living with Stefan instead of her other lover. Anna and Stefan both appeared to have similar interests. For example, they liked going out to bars, partying, and drinking excessively. This is how they spent much of their time together. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. During the early morning hours of June 9, 2013, after a night of drinking, 44-year-old Anna and 59-year-old Stefan took a cab from a bar to Stefan's condominium. Not long after entering the residence, the couple engaged in a physical altercation. Anna beat Stefan with one of her shoes. To be precise, a blue suede closed-toe pump, size 9, with a 5.5-inch stiletto heel. Anna struck Stefan at least 25 times, mostly in the head. Sometimes couples fall in love head over heels. This case illustrates why that's better than heels over head. At 3.41 a.m., Anna called 911 and said that she needed help. When officers arrived, they found Stefan on his back. Blood was everywhere around him. He was pronounced dead by paramedics shortly after they arrived. The scene was so graphic that the officers were confident that Stefan had been shot in the head. They asked Anna for the weapon. She directed them to a high-heeled shoe, which was on the floor, right next to Stefan's head. Here is the story that Anna told investigators. 
At first, the relationship with Stefan was pretty good, but then the situation changed for the worse. Stefan could not get control of his drinking. It was his Achilles heel. He was also emotionally abusive. He would call Anna all types of terrible names. He was obsessed with her. He would go into a jealous rage if he thought she was looking at another man. Despite all these problems in the relationship, Stefan wanted to get married. When he asked Anna to marry him, she was torn, but she turned him down saying that he needed to stop drinking first. In early 2013, Anna took a trip to Mexico. When she was there, Stefan stayed in contact with her. He begged her to come back. He told Anna that he would stop drinking. In late spring 2013, Stefan received mental health counseling and discontinued his use of alcohol. He once again asked Anna to marry him. This time she said yes. On the night that he was killed, they had gone to a bar to celebrate their engagement. Anna noticed that Stefan was drinking again, but she didn't think too much of it. When they arrived at his condominium, Stefan accused Anna of flirting with another man. He flew into a rage. Anna had enough and decided it was time to leave. She turned toward the door. Stefan said, you're not going to leave. He stood between her and the door. She said, please let me leave. Stefan only became more animated and aggressive. Anna made her move for the door, but Stefan grabbed her. They wrestled. They fell over a couch. Stefan slammed Anna against the wall. He ended up on the floor on top of her, and his weight was suffocating her. She reached for her shoe and beat him to death. The police did not believe Anna's story. They found out information about Stefan's personality, which was inconsistent with Anna's narrative. According to his friends, Stefan said that he realized Anna was not suitable for him within a few weeks of her living in his residence. He wanted to end the relationship, but he didn't have the heart to kick her out. In early 2013, management at the condominium received complaints about Anna, and they spoke to Stefan about it. He kicked her out and changed the locks. Stefan paid for Anna to go on a trip to Mexico just to create some distance. He did not talk about her anymore with his friends. When she came back from Mexico, she just happened to wind up at the same bars and restaurants where Stefan spent a lot of time, as if she was stalking him. This was easy to do because Stefan had a routine. Stefan decided to be polite, as was his nature. He paid for Anna's drinks and still wanted to assist her. He let her stay at his condominium on occasion. His friends painted a picture of Stefan where he was too agreeable for his own good and could not quite remove Anna from his life entirely. Anna was charged with murder less than 24 hours after Stefan died. Before her trial, Anna gave multiple interviews to the media. She proclaimed her innocence. On March 31, 2014, Anna went to trial. Here was the prosecution's theory of what happened. After Anna and Stefan came back to the condominium, Anna became upset. She pushed Stefan onto the floor and climbed onto his chest. She then beat him to death with a stiletto heel. The defense, of course, had another theory. They said that Stefan attacked Anna and she used her shoe to defend herself because that's all she had access to. Anna was found guilty of murder. She testified on her own behalf at the sentencing phase. She decided to dig in her heels and was on the stand for seven hours. She told the jury pretty much her entire life story. Anna maintained that she acted in self-defense and requested the minimum sentence of five years. The jury decided to exceed her expectations. She was sentenced to life in prison. Anna will be eligible for parole in 2043 at the age of 74. Now moving to my analysis. Was Anna actually guilty of murder? Some people believe this was a case of self-defense. Others believe that this was murder, but involved sudden passion, which meant that Anna should have been sentenced to a maximum of 22 years in prison. Let's take a look at the factors both for and against the idea that Anna was guilty, starting with the inculpatory evidence. There is no question that Anna killed Stefan by beating him with her high-heeled shoe. Anna claimed that she was attacked, but she only sustained minimal injuries. Stefan, on the other hand, 
had a number of severe injuries, including to his arms and hands, as if he had tried to defend himself from an attack. Most of the blood spatter on the wall was within two feet of the floor, which suggests that most of the blows occurred when Stefan was on the floor. In addition, most of the blood stains on Anna's clothes were in the thigh area of her pants, which is consistent with her sitting on Stefan's chest. On the day he died, Stefan called a cab at 1.30 a.m. to pick him up from the bar where he and Anna had been drinking. The cab driver, Rosemary Gomez, said that Stefan kept her waiting as he tried to convince Anna to leave the bar with him. Anna was flirting with other men and drinking at this time. The meter on the cab was running this whole time. Stefan and Anna finally climbed into the cab. On the trip from the bar to Stefan's residence, Rosemary said that Anna used expletives directed at her. Stefan, however, was not angry or upset. He apologized to Rosemary for Anna's behavior. When the cab arrived, Anna was still using expletives, now directed at Stefan. She yelled at him as he paid the fare. Rosemary was so upset by Anna's behavior, she offered to take Stefan somewhere else, like to keep him away from Anna. Stefan refused her generous offer, saying that he would be fine. Little did he know, but the cab driver had extended him what would have been a life-saving offer. Continuing with the inculpatory evidence, Anna was intoxicated often. She had a DUI in 2008. She was frequently kicked out of bars, and she had a reputation of being violent when intoxicated. Allegedly, she struck and bit other men. On one occasion, she used a candlestick during an attack. Moving to the exculpatory factors, Anna may have been intoxicated when she killed Stefan, but he was intoxicated as well. Stefan had a high level of difficulty regulating his consumption of alcohol. He had been sent to a treatment facility by the university where he worked, but once again he relapsed. Stefan drank every day and was typically intoxicated before noon. He was an extremely lonely individual. He did not have other romantic prospects and had difficulty in this area. With this in mind, it makes sense that he would have been afraid to lose Anna, like he was waiting for the other shoe to drop. Anna's unusual deployment of homicidal footwear speaks to the idea that she did not plan to kill anybody. Most attacks with high heels do not result in death. Most of the danger associated with a five and a half inch stiletto heel would be to the person wearing it, like a tripping hazard. If Anna was trying to defend herself, it makes sense that she would grab whatever she could. The blood on Anna's pants can be explained by her trying to conduct CPR after the attack. On the 911 call, it sounds like that's what she was trying to do. The blood on the walls could be explained in the same way. When considering all the evidence, do I think that Anna was guilty of murder? Yes, I think she was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. I do believe that Anna should have been eligible for the sudden passion condition and received a correspondingly lighter sentence. I think 22 years would have been fair in this situation. Moving to the last question, what do I think actually happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Anna had gone through her life trying to play by other people's rules. During her second marriage, she decided that she wanted to live life her own way, a life without consequences. Anna had a number of unusual beliefs which assisted her in creating a fantasy. For example, she believed that she had special powers. She could make people do things with her mind because of a connection she had with the spirit world. She carried around crystals to assist her in using these magical abilities. The easiest route to Anna's new dream was using her physical attractiveness to manipulate men into giving her what she wanted. When she stumbled upon Stefan, he was immediately attracted to her. Just like Anna, his life was spiraling out of control, in part due to alcohol use. He was looking for easy ways to get rid of his pain, and Anna seemed like a good fit. Stefan and his mother had been the victim of physical abuse at the hands of his father when Stefan was young. He said that his deepest fear was becoming like his father. He had a strong commitment to never strike a woman. In addition, he was not assertive at all. He was terrified of confrontation. His friends indicated that he never stood up for himself. 
Stefan was married earlier in his life, but his wife divorced him. He never understood what happened, like he couldn't figure out what he did to contribute to the divorce. He was looking for new love, but Stefan was shy and awkward. What's more, he had been fired from a job in Dallas and had to take the job in Houston for less money. That's why he was in Houston when he met Anna. He was lonely because all of his friends were still in Dallas. I think all the factors from Stefan's personality came together to make him a very vulnerable target for Anna. He didn't want to lose her, he was non-assertive, and he would never fight back. Anna was aggressive, cantankerous, irritable, malicious, demanding, arrogant, and had a sense of entitlement. When she attacked Stefan, he refused to engage in any offensive action to protect himself. He did put his hands up defensively to block the shoe, but his level of intoxication made his defense ineffective. Anna was able to beat him to death without significant resistance. Now moving to my final thoughts. This was a case where a homicidal predator who appeared to be destined to kill someone found an easy victim. All of Stefan's experiences conspired against him to put him in a fragile and vulnerable position in front of a woman who was unexpectedly lethal with a stiletto heel. Those are my thoughts on the case of Anna Trujillo. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.